All right, uh, semi dark and early, not really, because uh, it's that time of year, seven o'clock in the morning on Friday, May 1st. I actually can't even believe that it's May 1st already, to be honest. That seems a little crazy. Um, we got Orsi Zabel back on WRI. We talked last week. Uh, we actually had a really great conversation, and I, I was kind of disappointed at the end of it that we didn't record it because I would have loved to be able to participate in on that but um, I'm sure that this conversation is going to be nothing short of the same and um, welcome back. So happy to be back. First let's talk about this um, this run challenge because actually ever since you talked about it uh, maybe I just wasn't paying attention before but I've noticed that there's quite a few people on my news feed on Instagram that are also doing the same thing so because um, yeah. this is relative to what our conversation is going to be I believe so um, break it down for us. Let us know the warrior that you are with all this running. Um, so I did the calendar club in April. So basically you run whatever day of, actually I have the calendar right here. Let me just, what? So it kind of looked like this. So on day one, you run one kilometer. On day two, you run two. On day 30, you run 30. So whatever like day of the month it is, you run that distance. And so it was originated by Jesse Itzler and one other person in February, and they did it in miles. And he's like an ultra runner. And Colin O'Brady, who's like crazy, holds like 12 different world records. He was like, oh, I'm gonna do this in April. Anybody wanna join me? And 1200 people put up their hand. They yeah. were like, I want to. And so him and Jesse, they decided to donate uh, a meal to a frontline worker for every day that you do it. Mm -hmm. to, so they donated like 10,000 meals, which is amazing. That is. I wonder yeah. if they knew that it was going to go like that far. Because like that's a huge financial commitment, eh? Yeah. I mean, I think they're both doing really well, especially like Jesse Itzler. <laughs> like he, uh, he used to own like a private jet company. His yeah. wife owns Spanx, like, <laughs> they're doing okay. Yeah, they're doing uh, <laughs> uh, But they're also really, like, philanthropists. Like, yeah. both of them are, like, hugely committed to giving back. I think his wife signed that pledge where you're going to give away half your wealth. Yeah. And, yeah, so really just... Um, but no, I don't think any of, either of them had any kind of idea that this many people were going to do it. And till april only like two people in the world have done it and so now in april like 1200 people have done it Do but what colin that? did that was really cool because it was designed in miles it was definitely designed as an ultra challenge was to like do what you can do like mm -hmm. do it on a bike do it on a rower do it in kilometers do however you think you can do it because in miles it's a huge challenge yeah I did it in kilometers and it was a huge challenge. How, what do you feel like the wear and tear on your body was like, like anything, you know, because like this is, oh, this comes back to like, you know, like once you run, you know, like a marathon, you know, you should take like, you know, three to six months off, like for recovery, like, you know, and all these, which I like, I find is, is just like, you can't blanket that for everybody. Cause obviously it's yeah. like, with like nutrition and preparation, what your body is used to, like what your recovery protocols are like, you know, all that kind of stuff but like so just from your perspective like what do you feel like the wear and tear is on your body i think it's just that the the challenge is so heavy at the end like in the last 10 days i ran 255 kilometers so i did like a half marathon or longer every single day and sort of the people who are doing it in miles were doing like a marathon or longer every day right so it's just really heavy towards the end um my ankles are sore yeah. But beyond that, I don't have anything. Like, I recover really well. Mm -hmm. I had, like, a little bit of, like, recovery routine at the end. Like, I put my feet up against the wall every yeah. night. Um, I have this, like, pin cushion thing that I lie on that I feel like is really good for my calves. But I never had a day where I was sore. Like, I don't really, I don't know. Like I'm okay, fine. You know, and even like what you alluded to there, you know, like laying on your back with your legs up on the wall to be able to help circulate that deoxygenated blood through your body, get the lactic acid out of your legs, 
you know, and help prevent like any venous pooling in the body. Like, like those, like the little simple things like that, because everybody can do that. You don't need anything to do it. Yeah. Everybody's texting on their phone or watching TV anyway. Like it's just a really easy yeah. protocol to be able to follow that. There is a lot of effectiveness, you know, to that. So um, I guess that this would be a great segue into, you know, like what diet uh, protocol that you were running, because obviously diet is a huge part um, with recovery. You know, so like what, what protocols were you following during the month of April? Yeah, so I think diet is definitely the reason I recover well. Um, I'm plant-based, like I'm vegan. Um, and for the beginning, well, maybe not in the beginning. The beginning, I was kind of whatever about it because like I was running less than I normally would run. Uh, but as I was kind of getting towards the middle, I definitely switched to an all whole foods um, diet. Um, I was also doing a lot of juice uh, just because you can't eat enough calories to run like, you know, 12, well, like, yeah, 13, like, 1,400, 1,500 calories a day, right? That's a lot of calories. And when you say juice, like, do you mean like juice out of a box? Did you juice? Was it a singular, um, you know, like... I mostly used to juice truck because they're a local business and I like supporting them. They do cold pressed juices. Um and there's one that's like red, that's like beet juice. And so beets are just really great for endurance. So I would put like a tablespoon of chia seed into like the beet juice essentially. And that was really good to just get me hyped up. It's really hard to figure out your nutrition pre-running. It's not so much like after running, but you have to kind of get, get it right before running or you might hit like nausea during the run. You know, there's certain things where you want your body to be focused on running, not digesting. Yeah. But you still need to take in enough calories to like fuel your epic long run. So yeah. I was doing like oatmeal with um, like a banana and like peanut butter, like a lot of like oatmeal was like kind of every morning. Um, and then like just like a juice like right before to like kick it off. So like, what would your, like, like, what would be the quantities of like your oatmeal, your peanut butter and your banana? Like when you're making it, what would the, the quantities of each of those be? Um, generally when I cook oatmeal, I do half a cup yep. and then I would do like a banana and like one to two tablespoons of peanut butter, depending on what I was feeling. Yep. <laughs> I also, um, I, I ran out of it, but I had new it butter which is like a plug for a local company. They put like some B vitamins and D vitamins, some like essential uh, vitamins into that peanut butter. So it's like having, or almond butter, depending on what flavor you get. But um, so you're getting some essential nutrients on top of like the fat. <laughs> yeah. um, I kind of ran out of that, but that's like a really nice thing to put into your thing too. Which would be great for vegans or, you know, like people on a plant yeah. diet, right? You know, yeah, absolutely, for sure. Yeah, you can get it at Body Energy Club. There's a few places locally you can get it. And I think it's, like, really awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so, like, when would you eat this meal versus when you'd run? Because you said you'd also have a juice before you ran. So, like, I would assume there'd probably be a decent amount of time between when you ate this meal and when you'd go for this run. Yeah, so I would... Well, first of all, I'd wake up in the morning and I drink like a liter of water. Like you need to like hydrate, like rehydrate. And up to like, I think day 22 or 23 is when I started carrying water with me. But until that day, I didn't really take any water with me. So I would do in the morning, I wake up. I, I, I think we talked about this last week. I, once a month, I juice um, ginger and lemon and I make like little ice cube trays. Like I fill it up. So like every morning I just pop out like an ice cube, put it in my water. So I do lemon ginger water first thing. I would do that and then like get some work done. And then like half an hour later I would eat. And then maybe like an hour, an hour and a half later, I'd have the juice. And then the juice would be like right like rock and roll time. Like I'm putting on my shoes. Oh, okay. So in knowing like all this, like do you think that this was sustainable for you, you know, not only like energy wise, but recovery, um, you know, because like, obviously like, you know, we're still like COVID-19 protocols, you know, and like nobody's working, like obviously yeah. it's expected, you know, like, um, you know, like you're not going teaching any classes. Do you think that you could have done this well doing like kind of like regular everyday life, you know, if you had like the time in the day per se? 
I think that I can manage the same amount of exercise um, like now, like it was like up to three hours a day. I think yesterday was 3.07, um, but I wouldn't want to do it all running. I think running is just like really, like, like, the, like it's hard on my ankles, right? Like my ankles were definitely like, ooh, like my feet were not like super happy, whereas the rest of my body is fine. But if I could break it up into like biking, yoga, weights, like hiking, I could, I can sustain that amount of time yeah. of working out and moving my body, but not necessarily running 30 kilometers a day. Okay. You know what I mean? Like that's like, nobody does that. Like, I, don't, I wouldn't even want to. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't want to. I think like doing like one long run a week. Like, I love like doing that. Just like lacing up and just like running till you just like can't run anymore. But I wouldn't want to do it every day. See, and like the, these are the things that do like that where it becomes like a want versus a challenge. You know, like there's that component of it versus two that also if somebody challenged me to do it on the trails or even challenged me to do it like inverted and then, you know, or like, you know, like, um, on like an ascending and then a descending skill, you know, over a two month period, like I would accept the challenge like that. Like if it was like contingent to be able to do it on trail. Your audio cut out for a sec. Oh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Maybe it's me. Sorry. No problem. I can hear you just fine. These are some of the great technical issues of the COVID-19 era still. No, it's okay. I hear you again. I, I had you on this guy and I think oh, the battery okay. just died on it. Yeah, no problem. Um, you know, but like, again, just kind of like going back to like this, like the impact on the body. You know, like I can run 5K on the street and feel them like my ankles and my knees and I can run 40K on the trails and I feel totally fine. You know, yeah. so like those are like the little things that, you know, like if we're going to do these big challenges and stuff like, you no, know, I think that like taking into consideration some of like the longer runs, you know, finding like a little bit like easier terrain on the body to be able to run on is a, is a big plus too, right? Yeah. I mean, I was running a lot on the dike here in Richmond and um, it's like gravelly and I found that gravel is just like harder for me to run on because you don't get like a good push off. So a couple of the runs I went down and did like English Bay because that's like paved and it's easier to just like get her done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I guess this is kind of like also like what we get into too, like you made some diet changes towards the end of this challenge, right? Well, only because you and I had spoken and I was like, okay, well, I can't go from a whole foods diet to a whole foods diet. So let me change it up. Um, I was really interested in your numbers. Yeah. When, because you've been doing the plant based, and I've been really surprised by your numbers, like genuinely, because I've studied plant based nutrition, I'm studying plant based nutrition, and they just didn't really like make sense to me. Mm -hmm. Um, because like a whole foods plant based diet is really like the diet to reverse any kind of heart disease, it's the only diet to proven to do that. It, you know, it's, it's correlated to like low cancer rates. It's just so much stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was like, wanted to challenge you to do whole foods. Um, so then the last like eight days or so I was like, okay, well let's party <laughs> kind yeah. of thing. Um, so yeah, so I just started eating more processed food. I had like, after a run, I grabbed like an a and like beyond burger. Wouldn't normally do that. Yeah. You know, eat, Ben and Jerry's vegan ice cream, had some kettle chips, like just like more like vegan food that isn't necessarily like whole foods. Yeah. 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 And, you know, and see in the, in the, the part behind that too. So like yesterday I went for um, my end of month testing with, uh, with Ariel and Jarvis at Vitality Wellness, a little plug there for that amazing human yeah. Um, you know, like going through like the testing on like the Zyto machine where, you know, like it, you go through like the, you know, mental emotional testing, obviously like everything to do with like your, your organs and function and like what's in disarray, kind of like a, a really big component of, you know, like this whole experiment. Um, and then doing like my live blood analysis, looking at my, uh, red blood cells, looking at like my white blood cells and seeing how everything's functioning. Um, and my health, like according to these, um, these standards 
is about twice as bad as what it was doing the carnivore diet, except for the activity of my red blood cells. Huh. So like it was actually really eye-opening to me because if somebody would have said to me at the beginning of April that my blood pressure was going to be worse, uh, my metabolic age was going to be worse, my biological age was going to be worse, my weight was going to be up, and then, you know, obviously my body mass index is going to increase, um, and then basically, like, double down on dysfunction in my body, again, according to, like, the Zyto machine. Then when I did my strength and conditioning testing yesterday, um, my conditioning was really good, um, but my strength was down almost 50% in one month you know like across boards like this is like the interesting contrast for me is because like being on a on a vegan diet i i knew i had my fifth gear back something that i was missing in when i was doing the carnivore diet because of the carbohydrates yeah. however the problem with that is is that i have nothing to use my fifth gear for anymore you know so like like this is the contrast between like the the two diets right you know like where i kind of see like the extreme benefit of both um, but again, like if somebody would have told me at the beginning of like the month of being vegan, that my health would have actually substantially got worse. Um, I would have never believed them at all. And like, that's like what you say, you know, like all these statistics and all these, all this research says completely the opposite, you know, but I also don't know a lot of people who have also done like this same thing to the degree and to this scrutiny of like what I've over just like kind of like overarching things you know like just really generalized stuff well you know and like i what the one thing like i allude to like with like the whole battle ropes thing on game changers is that like i could do just as long on my regular diet as i could on the carnivore diet as i could on the vegan diet it's just boring like it's legit right. after five minutes it is just so boring i can't even stand doing it any longer but like it has nothing really to do with like how I feel physically, you know, like, but like if you went into doing something like that and you were just having a really tough time, like mentally and emotionally that day, you wouldn't do good at it, you know, but like if you're feeling good and you're happy and you know, like everything's going good, like it just legitimately becomes boring. So I feel like there's a way easier transition, no matter what diet you're into being successful at doing stuff like that. However, if you're going to bench press 170 pounds, you just legitimately need muscle tissue to that. No matter how good you're feeling, I felt great yesterday. Rack that 170 pound bar off, which I'm usually getting between 25 and 30 reps in a two minute time period. I did one and thought I didn't even know if I could do anymore. Well, I have two thoughts sort of on your diet. Just like I'm, I'm famous Ariel. I'm a registered holistic nutritionist um, and I'm doing a, program right now on plant-based nutrition too, um, just because you always want to educate yourself. Uh, one was that your microbiome takes about 30 days to change. So when you were eating a carnivore diet, your body really got used to the idea of processing um, and assimilating meat, right? Like your, your gut flora changed. And now your gut flora has changed again, but it takes about 30 days to adjust. So your body was super ready to digest like meat when you then introduced mostly um, plants mm -hmm. and like the flora had just changed. So it wasn't ready. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that like, like I, I wholeheartedly believe it. I would have this same conversation. I'd be in your shoes saying exactly the same thing. My challenge to that though, is that the month before I started the carnivore diet, I was predominantly plant-based. So I was going into the carnivore diet on more of a plant-based diet than on a carnivore diet, but I had better results on the carnivore diet than I did on plant-based. So there would have been the same shift that would have had to have happened on the carnivore diet yeah. is what would have had to happen going from carnivore to vegan. But I was not only initially more successful in my numbers, um, but they got better and stayed the same more consistently through the month but my numbers on a vegan diet consistently got worse. So if my gut flora was changing over the 30 days, not yeah. would change at the 30 day mark, my numbers should have statistically got better, but they statistically got worse. 
Yeah, and then and that was why I originally called you. I was like, hey, you're doing plant-based, but like, what are you eating? Because plant-based isn't plant-based. And all these studies, like if you watch like uh, Forks Over Knives, if you read the China study, they're all based on a whole food plant-based diet, which is really unrefined, uh, really low in both protein and fat, right? It's, it's, a, it's a highly carbohydrate diet. And it's essentially just unprocessed fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, whole grains, legumes. There is no oil, uh, which people are like, ah, how do I cook without oil? Uh, But it's a very specific diet. And that diet, the whole food plant-based diet, is what all these studies are are based on. It's not about the generic kind of like um, eating vegan Ben and Jerry's eating kettle chips and Oreos kind of diet. Not that I'm saying that that's what you were doing, but I'm sure you were eating more processed than whole foods. Um, I would actually, so though I, if you would have asked me this right now without having the conversation I had yesterday with my buddy, I would have probably been like, yeah, you know, maybe. Um, but he actually, this is what he said to me too. He's, um, he said, you know, essentially like, you know, like I'm sure it's the foods that you were eating, you know, he's like, you know, like, um, you know, and like the, the quality of the food wasn't there. And it's like, well, I'm like, I'm like, actually it's not. When I was on the vegan diet, I, I ate a lot more like meals at home. They were a lot cleaner meals. They were a lot less processed because they don't need to be like, I don't, I don't eat junk food anyway. Like I think I had like a few tablespoons of like coconut milk ice cream at the start of the month just because like my oldest daughter had some in the in the freezer and I tried but like I don't ever eat ice cream I eat 85% dark chocolate like I don't ever eat Oreos I never eat a chocolate bar you know like it'd be super rare for me to have chips I eat plantain chips at best um but what about oils because oils is really what like affect like the heart yeah you know in like food yeah so like in contrast to like my overall food like like substantially like like minimal like like i would say like not even worth uh, taking into consideration in contrast so like when you look at when i say in contrast when i was on the carnivore diet i was eating beef jerky i had pepperoni i had tons of bacon i was using bone marrow fat on a regular basis i was like legit eating two or three inches of fat around my steaks i was eating beef ribs like tons <laughs> but, but so this is the thing is like like tons of oil So if you want to look at like the, like the oil that I would have used, like on any of my cooking on the vegan diet would have probably been like less than 1%. Now the oil I used on the carnivore diet would have been probably like 60%. So like, because I did what I've done, like, that's how I can say like these traditional theories that we come at this with that I would have three months ago too. But the way the last two months has worked out. I've had to challenge all of that stuff because it legitimately doesn't make sense anymore. You know, like I can challenge almost every like argument, something that I used to believe in too. And like, now I'm like, where does this lead me? Like, where does it lead? Cause like, I agree, you know, like, like oil, you know, traditionally like the way of thinking, like is hard to be able to digest. However, the month before I was almost drinking oil out of a bottle, you know, because the meat, some of the meat I was eating was so lean. I would have to use tons of oil to be able to like cook this meat. So like every time you talk about eating meat, I'm just like, ugh. Yeah. You know, so I make like, this face a lot. I've never eaten meat like ever. So it's just like it doesn't make sense to me on any level. Like I just but, like don't. But this is what I mean, though, right? You know, but and I've never ate only just vegan before ever for like a month. But like now I kind of have like this like stark contrast like between the two, and it's like, well, like what what do I know? Like I look at it like what did I actually know before? I went into the, like these, you know, like these, like these two different ways of eating, you know, because essentially I went from almost like all protein being on the carnivore yeah. diet to like almost all carbohydrates being on a plant-based diet. Cause you just legitimately, no matter how you're eating on a vegan diet, like you are carbohydrate based. There's no way around that. And now I'm going into just a pretty much all fat based diet, you know, starting today. Right. So like, you know, I feel bad for your body. <laughs> yeah. You know, but the, the only thing is though, it's like, but like, look at, look at what, I've gained like knowledge wise at that where it's like, you know, like, yeah, well, I might have had these skewed numbers, you know, like my blood pressure going way up and my internal biological age going way up. If I was eating a lot of oil, but I wasn't, 
And when those numbers were way down, I was eating tons of oil, you know, and fats and all that kind of stuff. So it's Yeah, I still like, I hear your experience, but I still think like the science is leading in like a different direction overall. Like I hear your experience and I believe you. And I know that you're really um, like on your numbers and that you really care. And yeah, so while I believe that it's your experience, like in my head, when I hear you talk, I'm still thinking like high protein consumption leads to high rate of cancer. Like the correlation exists and the studies have been done. And I, not that you're like a unicorn, but but I, I do think that that is not the majority experience. But so then this is what I say to that, because I do like agree, like I, I'm, I'm so far away from the average person who would be doing these things. Like it, it, there's a very stark contrast. So like what I say to that is, is these two things is that one, to me, doesn't that go to show you that the science cannot reflect individualism because we all are totally different, like in our days. And even me, I'm not the same me every day and I'm not the same me every week. Um, but two, like this also really goes to like, to show me that people need to experiment and be willing to be able to change like with the seasons, because like our bodies can go through different periods of demand. So like where I say that, you know, like traditionally by no real means, I will always lift a little bit heavier in the winter time because I'm not doing a lot of stuff outside. I get into lifting weights a little bit more. So I'm like, oh, well, maybe that would be a time where I would be a little bit more on a carnivore diet because I need that strength. I don't need a lot of endurance because I'm not doing a lot of endurance activities. However, spring, summer, I'm doing a lot more endurance activities. That might be a time where I need that fifth gear, but I don't need a lot of strength where I might be a little bit more vegan. You know, so like where like, I can see how even in my own life where there need to be, you know, like those like seasonal changes because across the board. I agree that, that definitely like um, nutrition needs to be tailored like individually, like, and it, it is a holistic thing too. It isn't just about uh, food, but I do think there are trends and I think you can identify trends. I think the China study is like identified things. I think if you look at the American sad diet, you can you can take correlation out of that right like when you look at the health rates in the us and you look at the diet like you can certainly take correlation out of things while certain things can be individual i do think that there's like there's trends yeah see and like when i look at these studies and when i read these things and i kind of get into them then you know like watching the documentaries that support both sides of the argument and you know, really dig into the information. The one thing that I've never really ever come across and, you know, and feel free to like correct me if I'm wrong, because I would love to be able to read this side is that them like scientists taking people and understanding what in actually cataloging how they've been eating and living preceding to the experiment. And then the change thereof, because if somebody's eating a, like a standard North American diet and then all of a sudden goes vegan, well, absolutely, they're going to be healthier. Yeah. Like there, there's no doubt about that. Like, like the, the selling argument that be, being vegan or being on a plant-based diet has made that fundamental change to me is a misinterpretation of the, the evidence and the science. Because, you know, if you go from like high concentrations of like processed foods and sugars and all this kind of, if you simply just take that out and do any diet, you will be better. You know, so like, there's just not a lot of like how people were living, what their healthcare was like before they started doing these studies when they made people shift to going on to like a, a plant-based or like vegan diet. Well, but here's the thing, cause then you were, you challenged me. You were like, then why don't you do it? Cause I was like, Hey, like you should go whole foods. Cause I think that that would be like a totally different number. And I do think that if you did this like 100% whole foods, your numbers would have been different. Mm -hmm. Like I strongly believe that. Um, so I'm a relative healthy person. I already eat like mostly whole foods. I usually like kind of like eat more like junky like on the weekends. Um, so I did the last sort of eight days 
I just started incorporating a bit more processed food, but I still had my oatmeal in the morning. I still like, you know, ate a lot of plants, uh, just like whole unrefined. But even within those eight days, like my weight went up, uh, my, I just like, just water weight, I'm sure. Like my fingers started swelling a little bit. My resting heart rate was lower. Just even like a couple of days of incorporating processed foods into my already plant-based uh, shifted my my health into a negative space. Yeah, and, and see, and the thing is like when, when you made that shift, and uh, like I, I'm only basing this on like what you said that, you know, you had some kettle chips and some of the vegan Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Um, but like a little so, bit. <laughs> yeah, in, a, in a vegan burger and all that kind of stuff. Like, but I never ate any of that stuff. Like I, I, I felt I, like you post some food and it looked like, you know, it was oh, like, like the Indian food that I was eating. Oh, oh, it looked like Chinese food. Like it looked like, it definitely looked like it wasn't like, um, <laughs> see, and that's all home. <laughs> that's all homemade. So like, you know, like that kind of stuff. It just, it just so happens that like one of my really good friends, he's a chef, you know? So yeah. like when, like a lot of that, a lot of the pictures and stuff that I post is all stuff that like we've made at home. Like there is like I only saw one photo and it made me think like, oh, I think that this is why the numbers aren't showing what I think they should be showing. Yeah, see, and, and again, like this is always the interesting part f for me is that like a lot of people may be like, you know, like eating all the time or not willing to be able to make their own food. But like, like to me, when people are like, well, what were you eating? You know, like what's something you would eat every day? And I'm like, I don't know, like tons of raw veggies with hummus because I love raw veggies and hummus yeah. or I'll make like my own food at home or, you know, like my little, like, you know, mixture of like, like plant-based fats and all that kind of stuff, like almond butter, coconut oil, milled flax chia seeds and hemp hearts and like cinnamon and all that kind of stuff. Like, like, I don't really eat, like, I know I was supposed to eat this Beyond Meat burger, like just even the patty of it, but I couldn't even do that. Like I, I didn't, I didn't do it by the end of the month. It's something that, because like, to me, I, I just, I'm not willing to cross that that threshold it's the same thing to me as like milk chocolate versus dark chocolate like like i won't eat milk chocolate because to me like it's just it's junk for your body so like like that's where i feel like my numbers are are pretty realistic when it comes to like the food because you know like like I said be between or excluding maybe having like a few tablespoons of like that coconut milk ice cream you know where like the sugar and salt content is so low that you basically have to wait 15 minutes for it to defaw so you can even get a spoon into it. Um, like, like that's kind of like the, the worst of what I ate or, you know, maybe some of those like veggie straw, like um, yeah. things or whatever, but like, like there's just not a lot of abundance of like heavily processed foods or anything like that, like in my diet. And I only say that in, in contrast to yes, things always can be healthier because you know, where like, you know, my, my vegan diet could have maybe been cleaner, even though than what it was. Well, I could have also went out and shot an elk and only ate like game meat that which would have been better, you know, than the meat that I was eating too, you know, like, so there's always ways that we can improve it. But like the base is that, you know, when I was on the carnivore diet, I was eating only meat and ate way more processed food than because I was eating like sausage and hot dogs and beef jerky and all kinds of stuff because I was going across board with it all. I eat more processed food exponentially on the carnivore diet than what I did on a, on a plant-based or, you know, vegan diet, um, you know, by default. Cause it was just your, my, my options were a lot more limited on the carnivore diet than what they were like on, on a plant-based diet. And like I said, like I say all of this with a confused mind and a conflicted heart because I would have never have believed any of it if somebody would have told me this would have been the result before this month. Yeah, I mean, like I said, that it doesn't make sense to me. So then when you were like, yeah, why don't you do it? I said, okay, but I'm curious. Um, I'm curious what you're hoping to see. Like, what are you curious about? What I'm curious to see is because again, now this kind of goes back into like what you were saying about like the, the, um, the oil and, you know, like plant-based or like whole foods, right? So like now I'm transitioning into something that's going to be a lot of oil and a lot of fats and stuff. It's this ketogenic diet. So what's going to happen there if, if, who knows, I have no idea right now, like if my numbers start to improve, like what happens at that point in time? Like, 
is going to confuse me even more. Like, again, I think like this is the selling feature of that. Like as much as we study the body, we actually don't really know the body that well. Like, you know, we can go through like all of these things because like, the, it, like a decade ago, people would think being on a ketogenic diet was the worst thing that you could ever do. You know, now like the US military before like elite combat soldiers go into war, go on to a ketogenic diet because of performance and cognitive function and physical ability. You know, and like that's the reason why we have so much of the research on the ketogenic diet is because the Department of Defense has pumped that money into it because it is so effective. You know, yeah, like, I, mean, like I, I think short term it can be. Well, I mean, you know, so even like if we look at like a, a short term on um, the carnivore diet, short, short term on carnivore diet for me, because I feel like I exacerbate the symptoms of what somebody would normally feel, but maybe like nine months to a year down the road, because the demand for me on micro and macronutrients is so high because of what I do. So I, I truly feel like I can produce a result in a month of what might take people six to nine months to, to feel living an average life you know, because my activity level and everything is so high. So where I look at that from like a carnivore diet, that those exacerbated symptoms would be a loss of um, endurance and performance. So like my strength was kind of maintained, but my endurance was gone and my mental health was kind of starting to go down. My energy was starting to kind of go down, but I had this physical strength, but like I see the detriment there. And then I look at like the vegan and plant-based diet, you know, where I can see that if I kept on going down that road, how much more physical strength I would have lost. You know, because like my like my protein is just not there. Like like I can't argue that I can't bench press 170 pounds anymore. Like there's just like that's just what happened. You know, and the same way when I was trying to do my endurance testing on the carnivore diet, I couldn't argue that I couldn't even be, make barely 60 seconds on a static wall squat. You know, so you know like those are the kind of things that like I look at now where it really kind of challenges me to think about the information I think I know or I thought I know with a little bit more of like a, like a critical, like opinion, because like, I just, like, I just don't know. I, I like, I realized that like, I just, I don't, I don't know if I believe what I thought I believed before. Um, but I, I still at attach to it. Like in my mind, I still want to believe that information so bad. Okay. So, um, you asked me to like, do the the whole food thing and like yeah. record it and um what's the motivation behind that the motivation behind that is like like i want to see if there's like a change because like i would feel what you're going to do on like a whole food plant-based diet would be a little bit more down the lines but like arguably still better than what most people are going to do when they decide to i'm going to become vegan because I'm already plant-based, right? Like yeah. it's it's not like, and I've always yeah. been really. So if you're if you if you shift more towards like this really refined vegan like whole food system that you were living into this environment to how a little bit more that people are going to traditionally live the average person on a vegan or plant-based diet, and your health gets worse. What is that? What's the takeaway for the average person who would be eating probably a little bit worse of a plant-based diet or a vegan diet than what you're going to do? Well, I, I think, I think it makes perfect. I mean, I think the numbers that I was experiencing the last week made perfect sense. Like I had, I was really, I was not taking any salt, any oil, any sugar. So obviously your body's going to start holding some water. If you start eating some unrefined grains before I was just eating whole grains, like it makes perfect sense. It's not like, you know, it's like, yeah, I gained weight, but like, it, yeah. it, it wasn't, it's not drastic, but anybody who changes their diet in that way would start, would gain four pounds, five pounds of water weight. Like that's just like, that's normal. makes sense. Like if you had no salt and all of a sudden, you know, mm. like I, but I knew they leveled off. Like, like there was that spike the first couple of days because like something had shifted and then it levels off. So where I'm at now, I would maintain if I kept eating like. So then like right then my question to you is that if you, if you eat this way, which I guess would make you kind of like a dirty vegan. Like I say that cause like, <laughs> No, but like, I just mean, because like the, the, you classify and this is what you've challenged me with is that I could have been a cleaner vegan. 
right? I, I, I think, yeah, I mean, the term would be like, is it's just like, I think it's just like plant-based or vegan versus whole foods. I think the whole food diet is like its own thing. Mm. I'll send you a link to the rules quote unquote, because I think it like, it's kind of confusing because like, I thought I was eating whole foods and like, oh, oil's not a whole food, right? Yeah. And so where that just kind of lines up for people. Um, yeah, because I think when you look at whole foods and the way people practice it is, is really just to look at like the whole food. It's not about like breaking things up into macros or micros because we're just assuming that there's so much in there, like we just don't know about anyway, right? So the, the point is to eat the whole thing. Yeah. And that yeah. the magic lies in that. And then people uh, are really encouraged not to, to count macros, micros, calories, like whatever, just eat an abundance of like real food. Yeah. So what would you say to somebody? So like, look at this as being the opposite, like you sitting in my shoes and you talking to somebody who's like, like, like a vegan who is going to eat in a way that you know, because you've ate whole food, isn't as good as what it can be, but they're selling to you how much better they feel and how much better this is because this is what they're doing and they feel great. But you're, but you say to them, you can feel so much better, still be vegan if you went whole food. I mean, when I, when I work with clients, I, I do, I, I don't sell them on like the idea of being like a hundred percent whole foods because I think that is like unrealistic for most people and just the way I was doing it before too, I would like mostly do whole foods and sometimes I wouldn't. Um, I sell them on um, uh, fruit fruit is when I go to things and clients love it and I feel like I've had a lot of clients have really, really great results with that. And so I think that that's like an introductory step into like more whole foods because you spend like from morning till noon just eating fruit. Yeah. And but people like, do feel better. Like that's like a one takeaway that I know that clients have taken and have done, you know, for like, like a year or two afterwards still. They just get in the habit of it. So then what, what advice would you give to somebody like me based on the experience that I had where like, they're like, okay, well, I'm going to eat this way. I'm going to incorporate, you know, like I'm not going to eat any processed stuff. I don't like eat like any junk food, but I'm going to have like this. Um, I eat about 80% uh, like plant-based, but I have about 20% meat. Why am I eating this meat? If it's only about 20% of my diet, I'm going to eliminate it all together and go full vegan, or I'm going to go full whole food, you know, like I've hired you, you've, you've given me this advice, we've done this. And then a month later, I'm like, I've lost all my strength. Like, what do we do from that point on? Because I feel like this is where I feel like the downfalls of like the, these diets are, and I don't feel like any oil that I would have consumed or the difference between a whole food diet and a, the vegan diet that's eating that a whole food diet would have maintained that, that physical strength for me. Because you feel like it was because from a lack of protein. Yeah, absolutely. Well, but I'll put it this way, whatever the reason is, I lost about 50 to 60% of my physical strength. Like, cause like, again, like I know what I know because I'm specifically going through yeah. these very calculated like experiments to be able to like extract this information. And across the board, I've lost about 50, 60% of my strength on because I'm doing the 170 pound bench press because it's just my body weight. I'm 170 pound barbell squat, 170 pound deadlift, and then chin ups. So it's all about like equivalent to like moving my body weight in these different compound moves. And I've lost about 50 to 60% of my strength of what I had um, at the start of the carnivore diet the month before. And then two months preceding that of just running like my regular diet. I, I lost that. I don't know, Blake, because I haven't honestly encountered that. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, I have worked with athletes, but mostly endurance athletes, because like I'm a runner, so I track runners, I guess. Yeah. And in terms of endurance, it's been like really helpful for people. Mm -hmm. So I would have to do research and I would, you know, um, call like my teacher and ask somebody like who knows like more than me, because I just haven't encountered a specific scenario. 
Yeah. See, and that's like where I, like, I agree that like for endurance athletes, I can see there being some validity because you don't need strength. You actually don't want muscle tissue on your body for endurance sports. It, just, it takes extra nutrients. It takes all this extra. But oxygen. There's lots of body builders who are vegan, right? But are they supplementing with protein powders? This is the thing. You like, I, I choose to take no supplements on any one of these diets because a diet itself should fundamentally be able to maintain your lifestyle. You know, I didn't take any supplements when I was on the carnivore diet either. And I could have easily been like, well, I'm going to supplement with a carbohydrate powder. And that would have, that would have cured it. You know, that would, that would have solved all my problems, but I'm like, well, but that's cheating the system. Like, like, you know, the same, like if, if people on a vegan diet are going to take a protein powder because they know they're missing the protein. Like I find I that to be athletes. I don't think athletes take a protein powder necessarily to like just like supplement um, protein. Because I, like, um, I think protein powder is like something that athletes uh, do uh, regardless of what they call. Mm. Wouldn't you say? Like somebody who is like, who is like paleo or keto, whatever. Well, maybe not key, but would have like maybe like a protein shake after like a hard workout. It's like the person may do both gym. I would say traditionally, traditionally. Um, when we were a little bit more still like, you know, coming out of like the Arnold Schwarzenegger bodybuilding era, you know, up into maybe about 10 years ago. Um, but I haven't taken a protein powder in, I would say at least seven or eight years. Um, yeah. Because like, I'm going to get that from my diet. I, I would choose to not take a, a like a supplement like that when I know that it's easily achieved in food. Now, like the supplements that I would take, like what I do is like my immune seven from Purica that has seven different kinds of mushrooms, like red reshi, cordyceps, and lion's mane, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, injectable B12, you know, a vitamin D drop, um, you know, like things like that. Though that would be like my supplements, but like when it comes to like a protein powder, um, you know, like I trail run, I alpine run, I, I hike, you know, I play squash, I lift weights, you know, like I do all of these things. And, you know, so like when it comes down to like athleticism and athletes taking protein powders, I know more athletes who are ditching protein powders and refining their diet than relying on protein powders is, is like a, you know, like a, like a backbone to their, their nutritional protocol. Listen, like I don't use them either, but I, I'm also not against them. I think that, that some of them are like really good quality, like Four Sigmatic has one that's, I think is excellent that I would totally recommend people take because I think it's super clean and I'm, yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm not, and that, I don't take it from like the product itself being bad. Like, like even like like Vega, like they they make a great product too. Like there's a lot of like great products out there. Well, and like I say it in contrast because like you can pick apart anything. Like a protein powder is a processed food, no matter how good it is, it's still sure. processed. You know, but so like if I if you look at it just like that the the quality of the nutrients that are in these things versus something we either a not having it or a less um, nutrient dense alternative. Like those are kind of like what you'd be comparing it to, right? I you think know. it can just be really, really convenient for people who are like super busy and they go from one thing to another. Uh, yeah. Not that I necessarily feel like you need to have like that protein boost right after a workout. I don't live my life that way. I run, I, you know, like we talked about all those like things. I'm like, well, I think that's I'm also not the, lacking protein. <laughs> yeah. And you have a great contrast because the, the, this was the whole point is like, you just did like all this massive amount of running, like, like, you just broke off this humongous challenge when it comes to running. So it's like, like the demand for nutrients is going to be extremely high on your body. You know, like, like, yes, I you're think I recovered so well because most yeah. of what I eat is just like pure plants for sure. Yeah. And you know, like, that's why like, again, like the data that like you have, like it is like extremely relevant because you know, you're doing this really heavily endurance related, you know, like um, the challenge. You know, and that's why I asked you specifically about like the recovery and like how you feel by that, because it allows like this, like this window into saying, okay, well, you know, do all these micronutrients that you get out of, um, you know, eating like this whole food diet, like, cause we know that they have like a huge role in recovery, you know, but like, again, the interesting part would be is that if there was any like correlation at the beginning of that, like if you had like a, a baseline weight that like you lifted, whatever that was, you know, maybe it was like push-ups or something then like you did after like if there had been yeah. any like you know like increase or decrease in that 
and stuff. But like, I, I think your information is extremely valid. And this is why I wanted you to come on to be able to speak about it is because, you know, like, look at like uh, being on a whole food diet and running all that, you know, like, how are you going to feel? You feel great. Like you recover great. Like you have great energy. And like, that's valuable for people. Running today. Actually, that was one of the sad things yesterday I was thinking about where I was like, wait, wait, am I not going to run tomorrow? Like the rational person, like, wouldn't run the day after you know like I just did 30 the day before I did 29 like but like I love it and part of me is like oh if I just like went for like a little run (laughs) but there's nothing wrong with going on on like a little run though right like it doesn't have to be like 30 kilometers but no but I I think there's there's something to be said for like taking rest days taking a little bit of time off and certainly that would be what I would recommend for somebody to do um but do i feel like i need it no so then let me ask you this then if we go with the theory about listening to our bodies and your body is telling you like let's go but you're conceptually saying i've read this or i know that i should take this recovery but your body is actually saying yes are you listening to your body or are you not listening to your body yeah, yeah I, but I think, I think like, I think it's like pretty rational to be like, I just did 30 days, like take a rest day. Like, I think I love pushing limits for sure. And I love doing extreme things and starting Monday, I'm going to start a new challenge, um, 75 hard. Cause it's been on my list of things I wanted to do. Um, what is that? 75 hard. Yeah. but well, I don't know what that is. Um, What's his name? Andy Frisella? I, I don't know. I can't say his name. Anyway, this guy invented it. It's, um, it's like a year long program, but the first part is 75 days. You do two workouts a day, two 45 minute workouts. One has to be outside. Yeah. You have to follow a diet. You pick the diet, but it's uh, no cheat meals, no alcohol. But it could be keto, paleo, plant based. Like, I'm just going to do whole food because I'm just going to eat. That's probably going to be the least hard thing in the challenge for me. You drink four liters of water. Not a big deal. Uh, You take a progress photo every day and you read 10 pages of nonfiction. Okay. Yeah. So you do all of that for 75 days. And if you miss one thing, you start back on day one. Oh, that's a huge commitment then, eh? Yeah. And I was actually thinking of starting it because I love challenges. Um, hence why we're talking um i was gonna start it right when i started calendar club and then once calendar club got going i was like "Mm, i should only do one (laughs) yeah and because also like i didn't want to commit to like running 29 kilometers and then doing a second workout indoor they have to be not consecutive workouts okay well and the thing is too like you know like you want to be able to like respect each one of these challenges too right so it's you know, like yeah. if you're kind of blending like two together, it's hard to be able to know like how you feel and like what the process is behind like, you know, each one of those, right? The reason was I talked one of my friends into doing it with me and then the calendar club popped up and then I just got way more interested in doing the calendar club. So then I was like, mm, but I could still do this other thing with you that I talked into doing. <laughs> so I was kind of flirting with the idea of doing both, but then I was like, no, no, I'm just going to do one. Um, so I'll start that, but I do think that, um, yeah, maybe I don't need a break, but I think it's rational to take one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. See, the only reason why I said that and like, and like, I, I have molded my breakage. So like I, I've adapted now to like what, like the newer way of thinking is like, you know, where instead of just doing nothing, you do like active recovery. You well, know, yeah, but, no, I, we have a, we have a Peloton bike at home yeah. and I've missed the Peloton. Like I was still like Pelotoning the first couple of weeks of the challenge. Yeah. Uh, but then this past couple of weeks, I was like, well, I should save my legs. I shouldn't do any like, so today I'll Peloton. Yeah. I'll, I'll still move. I have yeah. to move. It's like required, but I'm not going to go run because yeah. I think like my ankles probably need a break. Oh yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah it, the only reason I say it's just because like that's, again, like these are all like the concepts that like we all toss around now because like, you know, you would take, you know, maybe even like three to five years ago, you know, if you were to introduce like active recovery into people's daily, like mythology of thinking, they'd be like, no, 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 you need like, you need to like work out like 
three days on and then take a day off or work like four days on and take two days off. Like there's all these like rigid protocols of like taking time off. But now we're like, well, yeah, I'm not going to run, but I'm going to ride on the Peloton because like the, the impact of my body is low or, you know, like I'm going to take an active recovery day where I might do like some, like, you know, like, like, like some yoga or, you know, like I might do some meditation or like cryotherapy or sauna, like, you know, like we look at just like kind of keeping like that natural rhythm, you know, like just respecting our body as a whole, as we move through like all these different, these different seasons and stuff. But um, maybe you kind of like outline, you know, like what, what the changes you're doing for your diet for May while I'm on the ketogenic diet and what, what you're going to do for your, your diet change. So everybody has a, a clear picture because um, obviously you're going to make a change now and then we'll probably do like a halfway through the month update and then we'll do a, a wrap of one like at the, at the end of May to kind of check in with us and see how we both feel. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't, I said, told you, I don't have as many toys as you do, but I do have some things I can measure yeah. like have the aura and stuff. Um, I think, looking so basically i'm just gonna eat fruits vegetables uh whole grains and legumes uh nuts and seeds are allowed in like a whole food diet but definitely in lower quantities yeah um not flaxseed and chia because those are specific um for omegas uh but otherwise so just like a lower like it's it's a whole food like low fat kind of diet and i'll send you a link if people like really want to know it really breaks it down uh if anybody wants to follow along do it with me um it'll be like a really great thing to kind of follow um the sort of sos no salt no oil no sugar um i think is almost impossible <laughs> yeah. um just because of like if you ever want to have a meal that somebody else prepared and I just kind of broken it down in my head to what's realistic and what other people could like emulate as well. So let's say I eat three meals a day. And I do, I eat more than that, but um, yeah. um, so that's like 90 meals in the next 30 days. Mm -hmm. So I would say like, if we went like 80% prepared by me, that's 72 meals. I'm going to have no salt, no oil, no sugar for sure. That's yeah. like 72 out of, it'll probably be higher than that because we're in coronavirus times. So I don't really eat out that much. There aren't like that many temptations to like eat other yeah. people's food. Um, but if I'm at my sister's and she made a salad and there's oil on it, I'm not going to be like, mm, no. <laughs> yeah. you know, like, yeah. like there needs to be like a little bit of not to eat like things that aren't like outright whole foods, like, mm -hmm. like the processed things. But maybe you have some edamame and has some salt on it, right? So there's that little bit of lenience, but um, minimum 72 meals are gonna be like prepped by me, no salt, no oil, no sugar, like really yeah. just fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes. See, in, this is something I've been putting a little bit more research into, like, and, you know, just being like a, a Southern Alberta farmer, you know, traditionally, and then moving out to, to BC and then just being around so many farmers and like healthcare professionals, you know, on all the different spectrums of what that, that relies, knowing that our food is a lot more nutrient void because our soil is nutrient void. Um, I've been really trying to find like some really good research into are the current like um, um, micronutrient statistics based on these foods, are they based on like now or before? <laughs> Like, have That's you a really good question. I don't know how to answer that. I'm assuming they're from before and our soil is depleting every year. So our micronutrients are less and less. Like it's just, yeah. it's a reality. Um, I, I don't take supplements. I'm not going to take any supplements for this month. Um, See, I'm not worried about it. I do like, I haven't actually seen if our like farmers markets have opened, but I feel like it's like, ooh, it's May. Like farmers markets hopefully are like gonna be so you can get some local produce, even if it's not organic, unsprayed. Yeah. Um, I feel great about supporting local farmers. Yeah, absolutely. Um I do get a lot of like food also like 
frozen, <laughs> yeah. uh, which isn't necessarily bad in terms of nutrients because they get frozen kind of at the perfect peak. And I'm you glad you said that because I was about to say that too. Like most of the time, like frozen fruits and veggies are actually a lot higher in nutrient quality because they're allowed to be able to ripen on the vine or like the ripening yeah. stage. Um, how is yeah organic and you can get them organic you can get them at bulk even at a place like costco which is like you know maybe want to shop at costco but they have like a ton of options of like organic frozen fruits and vegetables yeah um and and even like organic quinoa and organic chia seeds and uh organic dates and like all these things um which dates are like my sure <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely yeah. Cool. Well, what I will ask you one more question before uh, we wrap things up. Like, what are some of the the positive things that, based on what you know right now, what are some of like the the positives that you think that you're going to gain over this month, like switching on to like kind of like a lot more of a strict um, like whole food diet. Um, I don't know. Like, I'm kind of curious because I'm. I've been always mostly whole foods and then like, like kind of whatever <laughs> on the weekends and stuff. Um, not whatever, still plant-based, but, um, so I'm curious because I mean, I don't have any like specific goal. I think like the reason for me to like tighten my diet would be because I would, if I had lack of energy, if I wanted to lose weight, like all like the reason why why people change their diets if they have a specific health concern. I don't have any of those. So I'm not like going for a result. I'm not specifically motivated by anything other than to be like, hey Blake, a whole food diet is better than <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious because I've never, because I haven't had good motivation, I haven't really pushed myself to say no to things, you know? Yeah. Well, and that's the beautiful part about like us, us all kind of, you know, like, like meeting each other for one, like in the first place, but like, we all are like-minded, you know, like we all love challenges, you know, like we all like experimenting, we all love knowledge, you know, and like, this was what opens the door to be able to do like these kind of things. Because like, even like last night at like 11 o'clock at night, I get this message from somebody like on Instagram, just saying like how much they just, there's like this whole group of people she knows that are like following like this whole journey and just how like how inspiring it is and you know like how they've all kind of made like these changes and like like that's where I love pulling people like you on and saying like there's a lot of other people doing this too like we're actually a lot bigger of a community of people who like like challenge themselves and experiment with diet and you know come from different perspectives because like that's the one thing I always tell people like like all of these results are only specific to me like they're yeah. not going to be specific to you. They're not going to be specific to anybody else. Like I know that these numbers and these situations are anomalies, but that's why, why I want to expose that is saying like, we're all a little bit different, you know, but you do need to experiment with this self with yourself because, you know, you're making a lateral shift. That's not really that extreme, you know, from being, you're already vegan anyway. Yeah. And you're just going whole food. Like it's not that much of a lateral shift is like what it was going from like carnivore to vegan. Yeah, no. <laughs> Pretty big lateral shift. Right. You know, but like, it'll be, it would be great. Like, you know, like, do you feel better? Like, you know, do you feel worse? Do you feel no changes at all? You know, like, yeah. like that's, the, it's really good information for, you know, people to be able to have. And I love that, like, you're kind of going into it with the more of an open mind saying, I don't have any idea what I'm going to feel. I just want to kind of experience the journey and walk through it and see like what this has to offer me. Yeah. I mean, for me and anything, it's just a challenge of like discipline, mm -hmm. really, because it is nice to you know, eat some chips when your partner is eating some chips, right? Like there's certain things that it's, it's just whatever. Like I could get Absolutely. sushi with white rice. Like, why not? It's not a big deal, right? Like obviously on this diet, I couldn't, but like some things you just do out of convenience and it's like, no, well, it's not that bad. Uh, so just like really like train the mind to be disciplined, I guess. Yeah. And, and where you say that, like, like that struggle is such a real struggle that I think that's the number one reason why that most people are unsuccessful with achieving like their nutritional goals is because they have a significant other. And, you know, like I'll say like this impact, one of my, one of my good friends, like he was vegan and, yeah. 
you know, like, so then, you know, like hanging around like with me and then like we go hiking and, you know, I got eating meat. We went hiking one time and it was the fundamental change. Like he had some of my beef jerky because like, you know, he was hungry and knew he needed like the, you know, and just like plans well. And from that day forward, now he's just like a meat eating fanatic. Like it, but like to me, I laugh about it because it goes to highlight the problem with social circles and nutrition is because we do become a byproduct of, of our environments and stuff like nutritionally where like it, it is really easy to be able to eat. like if you were surrounded by people who like like only ate meat or ate a ton of meat like it would just yeah but i mean that doesn't apply to me because i've never eaten meat in my life and i'm certainly yeah. surrounded by people and i've had roommates and have a partner yeah. and like i just can't like i really have to like I mean, the transfer to that with you is like the, you know, where like you were talking, alluding to like eating chips and having the ice cream and like having those things like on the, on the weekend, because like, you know, like, you know, your partner may or may not be having those things, you know, but if you were with somebody who wasn't having those things, it'd be easy for you to cruise through the weekend and not think about it. I'm just, I was just giving Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Of, yeah. Yeah, no, we, we definitely get tempted by things. Yeah. Um, just meat isn't one of them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I was just using it as like a like a transfer for people saying like there's all these different areas of how social circles and social situations, like where you alluded to, like with being at like your sister's house if she put some oil on the salad, you know, like you're gonna kind of you know break there a little bit and stuff like that, right? Yeah, and I and I just wanted also to just to be like like realistic so somebody else could be like, okay, so what does this look like? And I think having a number on that makes it easier to be like because like when i hear 80 20 i don't know what that means right yeah. like it's harder to like is that 80 20 every day is that where it says like okay so 72 meals have to be and i'll tell you at the end of the month whatever that number was yeah um and i'll make a list of all the foods because all the foods i eat should be single ingredient foods yeah so um and the link that I'll send you is like the foods that you can eat unlimited amounts of, and then there's like foods that you can eat sparingly and then foods you just can't eat. So yeah. the foods that you can sometimes eat are like single ingredient things. So I could eat like edamame pasta because the only ingredient in it is edamame. Yeah. So while it's a processed food, it's a single ingredient food. So I'll make a list of like all the foods I eat this oh. month. And there should be nothing chemical, nothing that you can't pronounce, like nothing like that. Like it should all be like, yep, that's food, right? Yep. Like really recognizable. Awesome. Well, I can't wait yeah. to be able to get the the updates as we go and especially like the the big wrap up one at the at the end just to kind of see what this month has been like for both of us. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on today, Orsi. I really appreciate your time. My pleasure. Bye. <laughs>